Remember the Apple Newton? The iconic handheld device that promised to change the way we interacted with technology? In today's video, we take a trip down memory lane to explore the rise and fall of the Newton, a lesson in product failure that still resonates today. From its revolutionary handwriting recognition to its futuristic features, the Newton captured our imaginations and sparked a tech revolution. But as the hype grew, so did the disappointments. Join us as we uncover the untold stories, the behind-the-scenes struggles, and the pivotal moments that led to its downfall. Over 30 years ago, on May 29, 1992, Apple announced the Newton Message Pad. This personal digital assistant shook the world of technology and was considered to be one of the earliest examples of a handheld computing device. It was designed to be a portable device that could help users with tasks like note-taking, organizing contacts, and managing calendars. At the time, the concept of a handheld device with advanced computing capabilities was revolutionary. The Newton introduced features like handwriting recognition, which allowed users to write directly on the device's screen using a stylus. This was an exciting innovation that promised to make data input more intuitive and natural. When it was announced, there was so much anticipation from many people who wanted to get their hands on the technology. But it wasn't until over a year later that it was released on August 3, 1993. The initial reception of the Newton was positive, with many people seeing it as a glimpse into the future of personal computing. However, the device faced some challenges and criticisms, which eventually led to its discontinuation on February 27, 1998. The whole journey that led to the invention of the Newton started in 1983. That year, Steve Jobs, co-founder of Apple, was searching for a new CEO to help steer the company's future growth. He convinced John Scully, the president of PepsiCo at the time, to join Apple as its new CEO. Jobs famously asked Scully, do you want to sell sugar water for the rest of your life, or do you want to come with me and change the world? This persuasive pitch led Scully to leave PepsiCo and join Apple. Scully's tenure at Apple was very notable. He aimed to make Apple more competitive in the personal computer market by introducing new products and marketing strategies. However, tensions between Scully and Jobs began to rise, leading to power struggles and disagreements over the direction of the company. In 1985, Jobs was ultimately ousted from Apple. After Jobs' departure, the Apple team continued to work on innovative projects, one of which was the creation of the Newton. Steve Sackerman, an Apple engineer, played a crucial role in the development of the Newton platform. Sackerman felt bored after launching the Macintosh 2 and wanted to work on a project that would push the boundaries of computing further. He saw an opportunity in the emerging field of personal digital assistants PDAs, and decided to pursue the development of the Newton. To create the Newton, Sockman needed a powerful and efficient processor. He initially contacted AT&T to obtain their Hobbit chip, but unfortunately things didn't go as planned. According to Apple chief scientist Larry Tesler, the chip was overpriced, limited in functionality, and had too many bugs. This setback led Sockman and his team to search for an alternative solution. During their search, Apple discovered a small British computer company called Acorn. Acorn had developed a new CPU design known as the Acorn RISC machine, ARM, which offered impressive processing speeds and incredibly low power requirements. Recognizing the potential of this technology, Apple decided to invest $3 million in Acorn and collaborate with the company to design a new revision of the chip, the Acorn RISC machine. The ARM chip, with its efficient performance and low power consumption, became a critical component of the Newton project. The energy efficiency of the ARM chip was instrumental in creating a portable device that could run for extended periods on battery power. Meanwhile, Larry Tesler approved Steve Capps to lead the Newton project. Capps was a talented engineer who had previously worked on the Macintosh and was known for his expertise in user interface design. Under Caps's leadership, the Newton team focused on creating an intuitive user experience, including features like handwriting recognition and a touch base interface. They worked to refine the software and hardware aspects of the Newton, aiming to make it a breakthrough device in the emerging PDA market. A major selling point of the device was its functional handwriting system. The Newton aimed to allow users to write directly on the device's screen using a stylus, with the software translating their handwriting into digital text. This was a groundbreaking concept at the time, promising to revolutionize data input on a handheld device. To demonstrate the capabilities of the Newton, Apple organized high-profile events and presentations. One notable demonstration took place at the Aspen International Design Conference in 1992. During the presentation, Apple's then-CEO John Scully showcased the Newton by writing the sentence, Call Mother, on the device. 
However, the handwriting recognition system faltered, misinterpreting Call Mother as Call Mr. Hoover. This moment, though memorable, raised concerns about the accuracy and reliability of the Newton's handwriting recognition. As development progressed, the pressure to deliver the Newton mounted, leading Apple engineers to work grueling hours. Reports emerged of engineers routinely working 15 to 20 hour days in an attempt to meet deadlines and address technical challenges. This intense work environment took a toll on the mental health of the team members. Tragically, the pressure and stress associated with the Newton's development resulted in a devastating incident. On December 7, 1992, a 30-year-old Apple engineer named Koei Sono died by suicide. This event shocked the Apple community and highlighted the need for better mental health support in the workplace. In response to this tragedy, Apple instituted mental health checks and implemented support programs for its employees. The company recognized the importance of fostering a healthy work environment and took steps to prioritize the well-being of its staff. After a long and arduous development process, Apple announced on August 2, 1993 that the Newton was officially shipping. The retail price of the Newton message pad was $900 in 1993. That's about $1,800 in today's dollars. Insane, right? For that money, many users expected to get a flawless and highly innovative device, but the reverse was the case. The handwriting recognition, which was marketed as the primary feature of the device, malfunctioned. To work, it had to be trained on a user's unique writing, and most times, it failed to recognize many words. This flawed handwriting recognition system quickly became its Achilles heel. Renowned cartoonist Gary Trudeau, the author of the comic strip Doonesbury, created a series of strips that humorously depicted a character struggling to get the Newton to recognize his handwriting, resulting in comical and incorrect translations. The Simpsons, a popular animated TV show, also poked fun at the Newton's handwriting recognition in an episode where a character's note to beat up Martin was hilariously translated as eat up Martha by the device. While the handwriting issues were problematic, they alone would not have been fatal for the Newton. However, the device fell short of meeting the massive media hype and public expectations in other areas as well. Some of the features of the Newton, like ebook reading support, were ahead of their time, preceding the launch of Amazon's Kindle store by 14 years. Other features, such as wireless capabilities, were limited by the absence of advanced wireless infrastructure. The Newton featured an infrared port for data transfer between devices in the same room, but it lacked seamless connectivity options like Wi-Fi or cellular networks, which were still in their early stages. The Newton ran on its custom operating system called Newton OS, which was developed in C++. It also had its own programming language, Newton Script, which enabled third-party developers to create applications, but the development environment was just too advanced at the time. Following the release of the original Newton MessagePad 100, Apple introduced several updated models that aimed to improve upon the initial offering. Newton OS 2.0 brought significant enhancements to the platform. The handwriting recognition system got a substantial upgrade, addressing the accuracy issues that plagued the earlier versions. The text expander feature was introduced, allowing predefined shortcuts to automatically expand into full-length text, increasing productivity for users. Additionally, the ability to rotate the screen into a landscape orientation and attach an optional keyboard provided more flexibility for users in terms of input and usability. One of the strengths of the Newton platform was its support for third-party software. Developers created a range of applications that expanded the functionality of the device, including productivity tools, games, and utilities. Despite these improvements and expanded offerings, the subsequent models of the Newton did not experience significant increases in sales or market adoption. The Newton faced tough competition from other handheld devices, and its flaws and limitations continued to impact its commercial success. Most users eventually traded their Newtons for other devices, while others completely abandoned them. In fact, only an estimated 200,000 were ever sold. Today, the Newton is often seen as a failed project due to its relatively short lifespan before being discontinued. However, its legacy is far from insignificant. Many individuals who worked on the Newton project went on to play key roles in the development of the iPhone, including Mike Colbert, Greg Christie, and Joni Ive. Ideas and features that originated with the Newton made their way into Apple's subsequent products. Some influences were relatively minor, such as the puffer smoke animation when deleting something, which eventually found its way into the Mac OS dock. Others had a more profound impact. The Newton's Intelligent Assistant feature, which allowed tasks to be performed using natural language, re-emerged in the form of Siri and Google's Voice Assistant. 
The universal search across all data and applications pioneered by the Newton found its way into features like Spotlight and Google's device searching capabilities. The Newton also pioneered validated form-based input, which became a significant aspect of websites and web-based applications. Furthermore, Newton Script, the Newton's custom programming language, influenced the creation of JavaScript, which has since become the most popular programming language worldwide. Additionally, the CPU chip that powered the Newton was spun off into a separate entity. The ARM designs became ubiquitous in the mobile industry, powering nearly every smartphone and tablet worldwide. These designs eventually formed the foundation of Apple's custom silicon, known as Apple Silicon. While the Newton's commercial journey may have been challenging, its technological contributions and the people involved in its development left an indelible mark on the world of mobile computing and influenced the trajectory of Apple's subsequent successes. If you could get your hands on the Newton message pad today, would you consider getting one? Leave your opinions in the comment section below and don't forget to like this video and hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching.